Cool. Okay, so yeah, as promised, we'll talk about quick sort today. Um, in the past two sessions, we looked at bubble sort uh, and at nerd sort. And today's the turn for quick sort. Um, turns out quick sort is another divide and conquer algorithm. Um, and it also has a divided in half step similar to merge sort, um, which is uh, part of what makes it interesting. Um, and we'll see how quick sort is a more efficient algorithm. Um, the time complexity of quick sort is still n log n. There is no, there's you know, so far nothing has been discovered or implemented that's faster than n log n. Um, I think I was reading at some point in, an article in Wikipedia where there's actually like a um, some. I, I think there's a price if you if you manage to sort an, an array in faster than n log n, uh, you will get like a lot of money. <laughs> Um, and who knows if maybe quantum computers later on uh, will be able to, to do that. But um, yeah, QuickSort is still one of uh, one efficient algorithm um, and being n log of what, um, what What are some of the things that, um, maybe what are some of the keywords that you remember from the sorting we have seen so far? or you know, whatever comes to mind. The, um, you're always gonna be evaluating two mm -hmm. integers at, at some point. Mm -hmm. um, there's gonna be, or at least if not necessarily two integers, but, but there, there is a comparison at some point just to figure out which, which side they should be on. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's that's right. Um, that's nice. And we should look for the middle, right? Uh, looking for the middle point. That is that is only a in merge sort, and as we're gonna see today, also part of quick sort. Um, so you know, let's say yes, we do have a middle point. Um, but we only get that on merge sort. Merge sort, I guess merge um, or quick sort. Mm -hmm. Anything else? I think swapping. Elements. Yeah, swapping. Is that how you spell swapping? Double P. Cool. I think so. Yeah. Um. Okay. What about the? What do we, this is something we talked about uh, at some point. Why do we want to do sorting? What is the motivation for sorting an input? It can make uh, input easier to manipulate or store, or uh, perhaps find what we're looking for. Yep, is a fast to do fast lookup, right? Um, essentially, uh, and I think the analogy that I gave last time was. You know, if, if your closet is organized where you have your shirts in one, where you one side, your pants in some other side, your underwear in some other side, when you go search for something, it will be really quickly for you to find that thing because you have it in this order. Um, if, if it's all over the place, uh, then it's gonna take a longer time to find what you're gonna wear next. Um, and, you know, this uh, here we're gonna be looking at numbers. Uh, and when you have a sorted array, uh, finding any particular number could be really fast using binary search, um, which will be then uh, log of n time complexity um, with binary search. Um, once you have, uh, if you, if for example, if you want to find the smallest number in the array, you know that will be at the beginning or at the end, depending on how it is sorted. Um, 
if you want to get the largest element in the array, um, you'll probably be at the end or at the beginning, again, depending on whether it's sorted descending or ascending order. Um, and anything in between just becomes really fast as if you were searching in a phone book, uh, really. Um, cool. So why we do sorting? We do sorting for fast to come um, and for, you know, Order, order things um, allow us to get through them faster. Um, so I think, let me clean some of this stuff up. I don't think we're gonna need, um, actually, maybe we'll, not sure we'll touch. So there is, there is, there is um, the implementation we're gonna see today is, is, um, is, I guess it's a different implementation from the most widely used implementation. The most widely used implementation, I, um, I actually had never seen it before. Um, and I looked at it today and I've managed to figure out how it works, but it took me a little bit because, um, because it uses like four pointers. It uses I, M, K, and J. And then the way that in which those move uh, was a bit confusing at first. So we'll see a, a simplified um, or yeah, a simplified version of, of quick sort, but there's essentially still doing the same thing that this uh, with four pointers is doing. Essentially it's still the same. The idea, the algorithm is still being followed in the same way. It's just the specifics of how it's executed is different. But let's focus on the idea first, and then we have time we look into this slightly more efficient, but it's still it's still in it's still n log n, um, so it's not more efficient than n log n. Um, it's just um, it doesn't use as much additional space. Um, cool. Oh, actually, now that I think about it, uh, yeah, the. The R algorithm, um, the one we will see today, I guess is, 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 is gonna use um, linear space. We're gonna, have, we're gonna have some copies of the array, um, but the more efficient one uh, doesn't use any additional space. Um, but in that, you know, it's, it's, it's so interesting how everything that we see in this class is a trade-off. Um, and here the trade-off is, so the more efficient implementation that uses all one space, but still logarithmic time, um, you, the trade-off there is complexity, um, human complexity, not computer, because, um, because the, the, the algorithm that um, uses constant space, like I said, uses four pointers. Uh, it doesn't need any additional space, so it's, it's sorting in place. But um, it's hard for understand us for, for humans. Um, you know, it's, it's just easy to get lost. So it's complex for us um, on that implementation. The other implementation that we'll see first is it uses additional space, but it's easier for us to understand. Um, and again, as I'm saying, we first want to understand the idea of quick sort, and then from there we could actually execute. Quick sort in a few different ways. Um, yeah. So okay, let's go in here. Let me hide this and let me go here. Yeah. So let's let's take a quick look as to. Uh, I think I updated this. Um, actually, let's do this exercise first. So we're gonna start with this exercise. Um, so I want you to I want you to write a function. Uh, we're gonna call that function partition. You could use it REPL. Or you could do it on your local um, local VS Code. Um, and this function takes in an array um, that could be something like this. is is an unsorted array, and it should partition the array in three parts. Uh, and let's say, let's, let's call the middle element, the pivot. Uh, and we're gonna revisit this. This is a word that I'm gonna be saying a lot. The pivot, let's say the middle element is the pivot. 
then we want to partition the array in three subarrays around the pivot. And we're going to have uh, less than pivot. We're going to have all the elements that are less than the pivot. We're going to then have all the elements that are equal uh, or the pivot and all the elements that are greater than the pivot. And then we should return uh, the subarrays in an object uh, with properties less than pivot, equal to pivot, and greater than pivot. So if we have this array, uh, 11, 8, 15, 10, 4, 14, and 2. Um, we want our function to return you know, three subarrays um, where less than pivot has all the elements that are less than the pivot. And again, saying the pivot is the middle element, so in this case, it will be 10. So less than the pivot has all the uh, elements that are less than. Um, equal to the pivot has the elements that are equal to the pivot or the pivot itself. In this case, there's only one element um, equal to the pivot, which is the pivot itself. Um, and then greater than pivot return is, has an array that has all the elements that are greater than the pivot. Cool. Does this make sense? What the, what the job to do here is? Yes. <laughs> cool. Um, any additional questions I guess I should have also asked? Okay. So let's take, uh, let's take seven minutes to write this function. So your job is to write the partition function. I'm gonna leave it there so you can see it. I'm gonna pause the recording. Does I actually was able to get a, a working implementation. Um, okay. Sorry to step away for a moment. No worries, no worries. Um, okay, and see how you, I, I think you said wait. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking for my Zoom. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. How did it go for you? I just get one number, mm. and it seems completely wrong. Okay. Um, I don't have it. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, let's see. Let's let's take a look at um, Douglas implementation. Um, Douglas, if you could share your screen, am I still sharing? I guess I am. my sound first and jump over to this should be my primary screen share that and then swing over here and let's see if i can make this full oh where's my well maybe we can drag this up a bit um is this big enough for everyone to see yep um so uh, I, I uh, create my, my function and I take in an array. Um, this is uh, just so I know where the middle of the array is. Um, I think that's handling if I have an even uh, input, uh, but, uh, but if not, I think it should be at least, at least getting me a, 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 full, a full number thanks to math.floor. Um, then uh, in the output, uh, I create less than pivot, equal than pivot, and greater than pivot, and uh, I assign them all empty arrays to start. Um, then I loop over uh, the input. Uh, we don't need the index, so I just sort of truncated it to let num of, or of array. Um, and if the number, oops, if the number is equal to the middle that I establish up at the top, uh, then I want to, and this took me a second, I was actually mixing my, uh, my dot notation and my, my square notation. The, 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 I was using brackets around my, uh, <laughs> my, my mm. keys uh, mm. at first. And I was like, why isn't this working? It's throwing me, er me errors. Um, but uh, output equal to pivot, push, num. Um, or if it's the num is greater than the middle, uh, greater than pivot, and uh, else uh, less than pivot. And uh, then return the output at the end. Uh, and then when you do, run the program, it gives you, oops, let me drag this up, gives you something like this off of my, my input here. In this case, I purposely doubled my, my equal to pivot, so I would have uh, some more there. Got it. Thank you for sharing. Um, any questions um, 
or thoughts. So I'll see him join. Uh, and also, Douglas, if you could scroll back to the code. Oh, sure, sure. Let me uh, actually, no, let me just get rid of this. There we it go. did a little um, similar to what Douglas did, but I'm getting a completely different result. Okay. Um, maybe let's take a look at yours. Uh, yeah, John, yeah, yeah. And let go of my screen real that. quick. There we go. Mm, okay. So what I'm getting here is just in the less than I'm only getting two. Um, and the equal to is completely empty. Um, mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm -hmm. And for the second input I have in here, everything is empty except for the greater than. Okay. Anyone seen anything anything weird or interesting? So I think it's a it's a concept. Um, mm -hmm. No, I just want to check what I get. Yep. This is a good idea. This is not fine. Oh. Wait, the way? <laughs> Try that again. It says it's not defined. It's right up here. Um, try to write again. Oh. Yeah, for some reason that Ooh. didn't work in the first time. Why is it saying three? <laughs> mm -hmm. So the thing is that you're using the pivot the pivot is actually uh the index exactly <clears throat> okay Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. No, it works. Cool. Um, I also just to have the like maybe uh the pivot, maybe doing the I mean this is fine. Um I will just do maybe the a ray at pivot around here. So you don't have to do it in other places. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I just want to check with Siham. Does this make sense? Yeah. Right. I don't know. I did this similar too, but I don't know why. I don't get anything. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Cool. Um, um, let's, let's take a look at your signal. So this is what I did. Mm -hmm. so I have the pivot and I put the array at that floor that the array that length divided by two. And then I did the equal is an empty array at the beginning. Uh, less the pivot is an empty array, the greater is empty array. And I do for let the name of the array. If the number is less than pivot, that's mean this one here, then you return less than pivot that push the number. Mm -hmm. Is there something wrong in here? This is looking good so far. So then if it's is greater, it's going to be in greater parts. And if it's equal, then we're going to just push the number. And then I return in here. And when I do this, mm -hmm. it doesn't give me anything. Give me only one. Uh, run it again. Here. Hmm. I'm in the quick sort in here. That's oh. There. Mm -hmm. I think I noticed something interesting. But let me. And also, was thinking, in case the array has only one, uh, one number, mm. or two numbers, what we should return. You really don't have to put that in there. Do you need to put that in there? Oh, <laughs> uh, we will, we will put. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, we would let's say. If we have one, let's say, I don't know, let's say we have five. Yeah, there is no pivot and there is no greater or less. There is a pivot, the pivot is five. Five. So, and then the less than will be empty. Uh, sorry, the equal to will have five and the left will be empty and the right will be empty, the greater than. Mm -hmm. And if there is only two numbers, for example, there is five and two. So there, if there's five and two, then equal to the pivot will be if only five, less than will be two, is that and the, then greater than will be empty. Is that the mat floor? Is it, oh. Yeah, it's gonna be five, that's true, because it's gonna sort actually, it. Actually, no, sorry, I think, the, I think you're right. I think here, here, this will be two divided by one, which is going to be one. So the pivot is actually two in this case. Okay. Um, but that still that still works for us. Uh, the pivot will be two, and the less than will be empty, and the greater than the pivot will be five. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, what's wrong in here? Cool. Uh, anybody notice anything uh, interesting here? Why she's getting one? I I do, but I. Um... Um, should I should I say why or uh, let's say what line are you do you think the problem is uh, that was gotcha uh, the first I think one. it's I, I think it's it's gonna start around nineteen okay John what do you think um I was gonna talk about the returns exactly so, so both the returns in line nineteen um, we don't want to return there yet because the, we haven't finished looping. So I'm going to remove all the returns then. Only these three returns. Yeah. <clears throat> so on the okay. 21 and the 23. Yep. OK. Because when I return it, that set is not going to look. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. That's there fine. We go. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. And also, you know what, uh, what led me to see that that part or actually uh douglas what do, what do you what do you see the um no that was that was what i was going to, to say was that it was exiting the um uh the the function early mm -hmm. uh when when the uh when it because it returns it immediately returns when it returns uh the first mm -hmm. time it sees it um 
mm-hmm. but uh, uh, I was yeah, don't smile. Uh, this this seems strong otherwise. Okay. Yeah. 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 I think what what caught my attention was that it returned a number when we wanted it to return an object. So that mm. told me she's returning more than once somewhere, and something is returning a number. And then it, it, the thing is push, push the the push operation returns. Um, the push return operation returns. I think. Oh, actually, I don't remember. <laughs> I think the push operation returns the number of inserts that happen, the number of elements you push, uh, and that's what that one is about. But cool. All right. So with this with this algorithm, you have half of quicksort in your pockets. Uh, and and we'll see the next half next. So let me screen share here again. Am I recording? I think I am. Um, where is the stop tool? Okay, so what you're doing, uh, that partitioning was gonna be something we're gonna use. Uh, and this is the way in which quicksort uh, will work. So imagine we have this array and we pick a pivot in the middle. Um, and then we say everything less than the pivot goes to the left, everything greater than the pivot goes to the right. So this is the less than pivot and greater than pivot. And everything in the middle is just the pivot itself or the pivot, uh, the same or the equal to the pivot, right? Um, and then we say, you know, so for this example, with four in the middle, everything that's less than four goes to the left. So this three goes to the left, this uh, three goes to the left, these two goes to the left, right? Everything that's greater than the pivot goes to the right. So we go, this five goes to the right, this eight goes to the right, this six goes to the right, cool? Now the key here is recursion. Recursion, you'll just keep doing this for all the sub, for all the halves of all the halves. And in the end, the array will be sorted, which is what is sort of cool and at the same time mind bending about the sorting algorithms. Because what you do is, so you have two halves now, and then you have you know three, three, and two, and you just repeat the step. You pick a pivot, and then everything less than goes to the left, everything greater than goes to the right. In this case, that will be two and three. Uh, and sorry, like we have three uh, as the pivot, then we put the two on the left side, we put the three on the right side. I guess it should be less than or equal to uh, in this case. Um, oh, that's an interesting point that maybe we'll touch uh, on later on. But this is the same routine. Um, where we do that divide, dividing um, now, and then we do the same on the right. Um, we pick eight as our pivot. So five and six will go to the left and eight itself goes to the right or goes actually, it goes sort of in the middle uh, in the equal to the pivot that we had. <clears throat> now, once we have that, it turns out that we have the array sorted and we just need to concatenate all the subarrays. And at the end, we have two, three, three, four, five, six, and eight. So we just concatenate at the end of the recursion. But the key here is the step you 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 wrote already. Now you just need to call that recursively um, on e, on the on the left side and the right side, or in the less than and greater than, and then concatenate them at the end with the middle point. So let's see. Um, Oh, I think let's let's look at let's look at, at this sort of pseudocode that we have here, which is what you what you did. Um, I guess this is yeah, this is a base case we could have. Um, actually, we're gonna need this base case. Uh, if the array has only one element, just return that. Um, so if the if the array only has one element, you will return that. We find the middle element in the array and we call it pivot, which you're doing already. We move all the elements smaller than the pivot to the less than pivot. We do all the elements greater than, equal to the pivot to equal to the pivot. All the elements greater than the pivot to greater than the pivot. And then the last part is like, this is the, the step we're missing. We're gonna concatenate and recurse. 
we're going to concatenate the recursive call of quicksort, which for now we're only calling partition. And we're going to pass in the less than pivot. Um, uh, we're going to concatenate that, um, the recursive call with the equal to the pivot and the recursive call for the greater than the pivot. Um, so um, let's, let's do that. I think I have that in here. Wait, actually, hold on. Let me see uh, not to put any spoilers just yet. Um, and this is, okay. Less than. Oops. Um, I think there's someone in the waiting room. Um, okay, so this is basically the same thing that you had, uh, right? We have a middle, we have a pivot. Um, we have a less than pivot equal to a pivot. And I just call this let me get rid of this n. <clears throat> I just renamed it from what you have, and I will suggest you do the same, rename it from partition to just quick sort, because we'll do that next. So let me just run this here, just to make sure that I have the same thing, the same code that you had. Uh, new it quick sort, oops, quick sort.js. Greater than is not defined. Greater than pivot, it's not defined. Cool, so I'm getting the same thing uh, that I asked you to do. Okay, up to there, we're clear. Uh, how did I open this thing? I don't even know, this is the first time. <laughs> Oops, maybe like. Hmm. Um, first time I get into this <laughs> and now I don't even know how to close it. Sorry, give me one minute. No, oh, I guess from here, I don't want it to go or grow that big because this is a new thing. Oh, that's interesting. You can drag and drop these things. Anyway, the terminal. <clears throat> um, so, so here, up to here, we're clear, right? Great. So now what we need to do is the recursive part. And the recursive part is just a single line, just like also, this is a similar experience that we had with marriage sort, still just a single line. We'll do, um, we'll do return. Actually, let's say, yeah, let's say, um, let's say this, let's say, let left sorted equal to, we're just gonna call quick sort again. We're gonna call it with a less than pivot. And then we're gonna get, say let right sorted. Uh, and we're gonna call quick sort. Um, and remember, I just changed the name from partition to quick sort to, and we're gonna do the greater than the pivot. And at the end, instead of returning this, what we want to return is, uh, we want to return the right sorted, uh, sorry, the left sorted, uh, that concat to concatenate it, concat. Uh, we're gonna concatenate that with the equal to the pivot. And we're gonna concatenate that with the um, the right sorted. And this is where we'll we'll talk a little bit more about this part. Right, I has misspelled right here. Cool. So what we'll do is with the left half, 
um, and the right half or the less than and the greater than, we're just gonna call quick sort on them, which will just do the same thing that you already know what it's, what it's doing. Take a pivot, move everything less to the left, move everything greater to the right. Um, and it's just gonna keep doing that recursively. Uh, once he has sorted those parts at each uh, step, he will join all the arrays together, which is this, what this concat does. Um, and just, just so that we see it here before that, um, so a quick refresher on concat. If you have, if I have an array, let's say, um, let's say hello, hello, uh, and we do that concat. No, let's say hello world. And we say concat, concatenate that with an array that has exclamation points. Um, we get an array that's three, that is basically the two arrays join. Concat is got a kind of the join of arrays. Um, cool. Um, and you can, yeah, it just co combines two arrays uh, in the order in what in the order you specify. So you see that this, you know, this is doesn't go in the middle. It doesn't go in the front. It goes at the end. Um, basically, adds to this one. Mm -hmm. So concat just concatenates to arrays. Um, in case you haven't used concat in a in a bit, um, let me create that. Now we will, so, and, and I think we'll do, a, I will do a visualization here because this is, this is sort of the mind boggling part. Um, but again, we pick a middle, everything less goes to the less than um, array. Everything greater goes to the greater than array. It's called a left and right. Um, and everything equal goes to the equal. And what we'll do here is, um, we know that the equal will always be in the middle. Um, so we join the left sorted array with the equal to the pivot. And then we add at the end, the right sorted array. Uh, and again, we'll see what this looks like. So let's make sure this works. Uh, run nude quick sort JS. Oops, maximum call size exceeded. What does this mean? What is this error known as? That's mean it's an infinite loop. An infinite loop, yes. Um, what's another name for it? It's a, a stack overflow. A stack overflow, that's right. And what does that mean? Uh, like, what does it mean with our recursion now? We forgot one step, what step? The, the base, oh, okay. sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, you you first, please. I said the base case. The base case, that's right. We forgot the base case. So here we should say our base case is when our array gets to length one, um, that's just return because there is there is no point on keeping recursing because there is no more divisions we can do. Uh, so we're gonna say if array dot length is less than two, return array. Cool. Now we have our base case. Let's try again. And our array sorted. Almost as if by magic. 2, 4, 8, 10, 11, 14, 15. Let's try. Um, well, that I think that was a run array. This is the original array I think I had given. I don't remember what I gave, I gave you. This one 12, 16, 27, 27, 38, and 39. Okay. Um, questions or thoughts before we look at some visualization here to try to make sense of how this is working. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna take a screenshot of this because I wanna import this code. 
onto my drawing tool. Um, can you see this? Can you see the square that I have on the screen or no? Yeah. Okay, great. So I check that and then I'm gonna come here and I'm going to import an image. Screenshot I just took. Um, and I think I need to pick where this is gonna go. Mm, oh, and this is kind of hard. <laughs> Uh, let's maybe let's leave it here. Can I move it after? Yep, great. And what array do we have? Oh, I don't have that array here. Okay. So we'll do the visualization here. Actually, I think this might be the array. Uh, so this is this I'm doing command Z to undo. And you see uh where did the uh, it did a a while loop copying every state uh, or or a for loop copying every one one by one because when I do undo I was expecting everything to go away at once, but no, didn't go away that one. Um and I think what I want to do here is uh, I think I had selected some stuff here. Yeah, this part. Copy this. Let's put this back here. And we'll do uh, there is some some bugs on this where my shortcuts suddenly stop working. To click here. Let's move this here. Actually, somewhere here will be good. And we, I think we may also need, okay, we'll, we'll do the two visualizations. Okay, so our array is this case. Well, hmm. let me think about this because uh, this array is actually kind of small, not very interesting. Um, we should try with what array? This one, let's try with this one. Yeah, this one is a good one. Okay. So we will have <clears throat> we will have have we have ten, eight, fifteen, um, ten. Oops, wait, hold on. Uh, this is not 10, this is 11. Um, 10, 4, 14, and 2. Cool. So we know that, um, let me move this closer here. Uh, Great. Uh, 
and get rid of this. Okay, so we, we can take a look at the code as we're going. Um, so we know that our function will divide this into two and we have the less than the pivot, which will be go on the left, will go eight, four, um, and two. Then we have that there. Then we have the, the pivot, we have it in the middle. Uh, let's call this, you know, this side will be less than, less than pivot, pivot and greater than pivot. On the, on the right side, we have, on the right side we have 11, We have 11. Well, I guess I should have, hmm. um, I, I should have sort of worked a bit more over the code. So we know that the pivot will be the zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, right? The pivot will be three um, or the index for the pivot will be three. Um, the index for the pivot will be three. So therefore the pivot is um, 10. And then we just created, uh, so that's our pivot 10 here. Um, with less than pivot uh, that all, we initialize the three arrays and then we say for each number um, in the array, we're going to you know, sort it into our buckets or into our halves. So we say, yeah, let's do this. We know that this is how it's going to go. Um, let's do this. So we iterate over the uh, array, um, comparing everything against pivot. So we look at 11, is that less than or greater than pivot? Um, it is less than, less than or, um, I, I just said something that's not right there. Uh, we ask if uh, our current number, which is 11, is less than the pivot. In this case, it is not. Is it greater than the pivot? It is, so it should go in the greater than pivot uh, half, so 11 gets put in the greater than pivot half. Uh, now it moves to the eight, um, check which whether that's less than the pivot, it is, so it goes to the left or the less than, um, it checks 15, is that less than or greater than, it's greater than, so it goes to the right, 15. Then it looks at 10, 10 is the pivot, uh, so it goes into its own bucket for the pivot or the equal to pivot. Then we look at four uh, and we compare that to the pivot. Is that less than or greater than? It's less than, so it goes on the left side. We look at 14, is that less than or greater than? It's greater than, so it goes on the right. We get at two, uh, is, that, is that less than the pivot or greater than? It is less, so it goes on to the left. So now we have, um, we have our partitions made, right? Is this making sense so far? Okay. Now what we do is just we recurse on each half. Uh, so note what will happen once we recurse. So we basically do, we are basically doing quick sort. Uh, we're basically doing quick sort on this and we're doing quick sort on this again. So what that does is, um, the, the left, it always goes first. Um, well, in this case, our left always goes first. We could do it the other way, but it doesn't, doesn't really matter. Um, so we're recursing on the right. Um, right. So before, you know, we just created those partitions. Um, our function has not finished yet. It's going to go to, um, you know, it's going to do quick sort um, on the less than pivot. So that's calling like quick sort on the less than pivot. And, Thing, same thing happens. So now we have this array with zero, one, and two, uh, the indices. Now we pick uh, the pivot will be four. Um, so the pivot will be four. And we have a less than, less than the four and greater than the four. And we go the same, you know, now we're executing quick sort, but with a smaller array, but same steps happen. The partitions get made, a middle gets calculated. Oops. In this case, our middle is 
In this case, our middle is four, and then our array runs with four. So now here we're asking is eight less than four or greater than four? It is greater than, so it has to go on the right side. Uh, and we check four. Well, I guess before we have put four there, four goes into its own partition because four is equal to four. Uh, go to the pivot. Then we do two. Uh, is two less than or greater than the pivot? It is less than, therefore it should go on the right side. So then we have two here. Cool. So at this point, um, <clears throat> At this point, we have this, you know, you can see that this is already in order. There are just two, you know, three separate, there are three separate arrays, but they're in order. Uh, now we just need to join them. So that's the step where, uh, it, what will actually happen here is um, we have, we have our uh, less than pivot equal to pivot and greater than pivot made. Um, for this other array, right? and it actually is going to call is going to call less than pivot on the left, or on the less than pivot. Uh, it's going to call quick sort on the less than pivot, and it's going to call quick sort on the greater than pivot. Which in this case are arrays of length one. Uh, but now remember that in our recursion, we say if the array length is less than two, we just return the array. So what that ha what that does in in turn is that, you know. Quicksort is being called on this array, and it's also being called on this array. But those will just return the arrays themselves. So again, two, um, four, and then you know we don't call quicksort on the middle point um, because we already know that that's in the right place. Um, and then we do quicksort on the right, um, which in this case is eight. That just returns the array. So now once here, once um, these recursive calls basically finish, they finish uh, and what happens is we go back to, we go back to this point. We go back to this point. Mm. Wait, hold on, let me see. Uh, um, yeah. I have a question, a quick question. Sure. So we're doing it recursively, going to the left and into the less than and the greater arrays to avoid repetition, right? Because it's, mm -hmm. it's going to repeat doing whatever is inside the loop. Okay. Say, say, say that again from the beginning. Um, so we're doing recursion with the less than and the greater than. Um, arrays because we're trying to avoid um, repetition mm -hmm. because what it does is just repeating that but on on its respective arrays. That's correct. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Yep. Um, yes. Uh, so once we have, what would happen is, yeah, we go back to we go back to this point in time. Um, or in the call stack, actually. And hopefully we can see, um, we can see, actually, I guess I could, I could be doing the call stack as we're doing here. Yeah, let me do the call stack here. So our first call, I'm gonna do, this is gonna be long. Our first call is when we call quick sort on the original array, right? We say quick sort, and then we pass in 11, 8, 15, 10, 4, 14, and 2. All right, we call, that's the first call that we did. After that, quick sort, um, it divided the things and then it's gonna call on the left, on the less than pivot. And we know that the less than pivot is this one. So that means quick sort gets put into the call stack again. Now this time with the left side, which is gonna be eight, four, and two, right? The less than, the less than our initial pivot. Um, and now when this is the case, um, the arrays still get made. Um, let me get rid of this part. So that, 
um, we are the you know the array is not length two yet. The array is length three. So these L, these arrays still get made. Um, these arrays still get made, which are in turn these ones that we're gonna fill here. Let me get rid of this. Um, so the arrays get made, uh, and then we run through the loop. Uh, and the loop we know that is gonna put uh, for this array is gonna put two in the less than, four in the middle because that's the pivot. And it's gonna put eight on this one, right? Now, now we keep going. So that's the for the for loop finish, putting one element in each one, and then we call uh, quick sort on the less than pivot, and the less than pivot is the two. So that means another call goes here for quick sort, and we call it with uh, the less than pivot, which is two, right? Um, now we when we do that, um, now we are executing quick sort with only a single element. And when we execute quick sort with only a single element, we now have here that that should just return the element, right? So once a function returns, it gets popped off the stack. Note that our initial uh, Q, um, quick sort has not returned yet. That's why it's, you know, it's still in the call stack. And, and the, the second or the first recursive call, the second call in our call stack has not returned yet. That's why it's still on the call stack. Now our third recursive call, it, it quits, it gets popped off the stack because it hits the base case and it returned the array. So that returned the array. And I'm to, that, to represent that, I'm just gonna say um, sort of, yeah, this is, imagine this was quick sort um, on the left. And then uh, if I move this a little bit, quick sort on the right. Now, so we're gonna say this quick sort uh, for a single array element, just return, it returned that array element. It returned an array. I don't know why I can't do this correctly. That's actually an interesting case, but um, we, that just returns the array, right? So that return um, here. Now, once the function returns, it gets popped off the stack and we go back to this point. We go back the execution um, we go back to this execution context. So now that finish on the left um, is going to now do the right. Uh, it finished on the left, which was you know just two. Now it's going to do the right. So then what that means is it calls QS again for quick sort, and it calls it with the right, and the right is array with eight. So array with eight. Now we know that due to the to the um, base case, this is just going to return that array uh, element because it only it's only one. So let's represent that by this arrow here, and it returns an array with a single element. And once the function returns, it gets popped on the stack. Now we go back we go back here. We go back to this execution context. This function has not returned yet, therefore it hasn't finished. So we then do the last step, which is return. So now we have left sorted, which is this one. Now we have right sorted, which is this one. Now it does the last step. The last step is just joining them. Um, so it says left sorted, concatenate, concatenate that with the equal to the pivot and concatenate that with the right sorted. So what that does is it joins all of this into one, um, into one array, which is concatenate the first element, uh, the left with the, with the pivot with the right side sorted. And now this array, now this array is sorted, this subarray is sorted, right? Two, four, and eight, it's already in the right order. Um, so after, I mean, once we have that actually, is that we can say um, this function return. This function, re this function that we have currently in our call stack, return this array, uh, return this array. So then we can, that gets popped out of the call stack. And what happens with the execution context? We go back to the initial 
execution. So now that what this is saying is we go back to this call and now the left side, the left side is done. The left side is this, um, well, I guess maybe instead of doing that, let's just draw an arrow here. The left side is done. Now it's just gonna go on the right side and do the same thing. Uh, on the right side, then our function, our initial function has not finished yet. Uh, it's gonna call QS for quick sort. It calls quick sort on the right side, which is gonna be 11, 15, and 14. Right, um, which is this call here. And I guess now I realized that I could have done this a bit smaller. Oh, this is interesting. Um, let, me, let me make the call stack a bit smaller because we actually don't need more than three in this case. <clears throat> um, so we're calling QuickSort on the right side, um, which means um, the array length is not less than two, is three. Three arrays get created, uh, initially empty. We run over, we have, we pick a pivot, the pivot will be 15. Um, we see everything that's less than the pivot go on the left, everything that's greater than the pivot go on the right. So in this case, 11 and 14 get put on the less than. The pivot is 15 that gets put in the in the pivot array. And the right greater than the pivot just stays empty. Right. Now here, um, actually, this is an interesting case. Um, then we are calling, once we have those, we know that it's gonna call itself again with the left and the greater than. Uh, so here is gonna call quick sort again. Um, it's gonna call quick sort again with this one. So it, it calls quick sort with the left, which is 11 and 14. Call itself again with 11 and 14. Um, it will do the same thing. It will pick a pivot. Um, the pivot in this case will be uh, 14. Uh, it still created the three arrays because remember now we're calling Q, uh, quick sort with 11 and 14. Uh, it, it picked the pivot. In this case, the pivot will be 14. And it says everything that's less than the pivot should go on the left side. Uh, everything that's greater than the pivot should go on the right side and the pivot goes in the middle. There is nothing greater than the pivot. Therefore, uh, the pivot gets put here and this one gets left empty. Once that is done, uh, it turns out that it's gonna call uh, quick sort on the left, which is 11. Um, and as we saw earlier, when we call it with a single element uh, that just returns uh, the array, um, then that's done on that side. We go back now our execution context. I should have also moved this arrow. Now we're here. Now that calls it with the right, uh, which will um, which will put QS um, fourteen in in here. And we know now that that's gonna return just the array itself. So it returns 14. No, oh, sorry, actually, uh, actually, here, I made a mistake here. It, it will call itself with, it doesn't call itself with 14. It calls itself with, um, it calls itself with the right side. Um, and the right side is an empty array. And again, we saw then that that will just return that will just return the array as a whole. Let me move this so I can move this here. Let 
Hmm. Uh, yeah, maybe not because of the, I think I have these other parts locked. Um, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, this is our, this is our call stack. This is our call stack. Um, again, we, we were executing on these two elements. Then the first one just returned that element. Uh, the pivot doesn't get pushed. Um, the, the pivot doesn't get sorted because we already know that that element is sorted. And we go on the right, even though it's empty, the call still gets put into the call stack and that just return the empty array. Uh, and once we are here, once we're here, then this function return, we go back to, we go back to this function here. We go back to our initial, our previous function which then concatenates the array. Now that's about to return. Um, now that's about to return here where we do, we concatenate and we'll concatenate 11 um, plus 14 plus empty, but the empty one just doesn't get put because you know there's, there's nothing here. Um, even though you see that, even though like this was already sorted here, but the algorithm has no way of saying, of telling that. Still need to run all the steps. Now here is guaranteed to be sorted. <clears throat> now, once we have here, then this is what this function call returns, which then gets popped off the stack. And we go back to, we go back to our previous function. And now our previous function was call it with the left side. Now it was done with that left side of it. Um, and is going to call it with the right side. So there actually goes here, another quick sort here. And the right side of this function is this one. Uh, so, which is just empty. And we now know that that's gonna just return the array. Uh, so we can sort of imagine this coming down here as empty. Um, and then that just returns, we go back to our, you know, we go back to our function here. And now that's about that function is about to return. Um, and that should return. That's going to do this. Um, that's going to join the left side, which was 11 and 14, plus the pivot in the middle, um, plus the empty, but the empty doesn't, you know, there is no, it's already empty. So we don't get pushed that. And now we have this half sorted 11, 14, 15. Now that means this function finish is this function finish. Uh, and now uh, we go back to our original function. Now that function is about to finish where we have, um, where we have, uh, we finish with the left, we finish with the right side. Uh, this is the right side. Now the left, the step that's missing is just concatenating the left plus uh, the pivot, plus the right sorting. And that, what that will do is, you know, we concatenate the left, which is um, just this one. The pivot, the pivot comes out from here and then we concatenate this one. What that ends up being is concatenated is the left, plus the pivot, which is 10, plus the right side. And then we have our array sorted, two, four, eight, 10, 11, 14, 15. Now, 
once we once that function returns then our call stack goes back to empty it's truly empty now um, and our comp our program is done any questions or thoughts I think when um, when I first saw Quicksort, it was a little complicated. How do you go from the pivot and checking and sorting it just using the, the pivot? I think mm. now it makes a lot more sense. Cool, I'm glad to hear that. Um, also, uh, the, the, it might depend also on the Quicksort implementation that you're looking at because there are some quick sort implementations that pick the pivot that use the first element as the pivot. Um, there's this one uses the middle element, which is a is a good it's a good point. There is some that pick the first element as the pivot, and there is another implementation that picks the pivot at random. It just picks you know um, it picks the pivot at random at some point in the array, and it just uses that um, and it calculates a random pivot every time. Um, so you might also, I think those other implementations from what I've seen uh, are, they just look a little bit more complicated, um, but the idea is the same. In here is just that we're setting the pivot to be the same, uh, to be the middle element always. Mm -hmm. um, and for a very large array, this just recurses. Would it, because I'm trying to think if it makes a difference whether the pivot is um, like the first element or whether it's the last element, but like wouldn't the, um, the implementation still be the same? Because you still can, you're still gonna have to compare it with and then putting it into two separate arrays. And then... mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it will still be the same, yeah, that's right. Um, Mm, let me see. Hmm. Um, because I, I'm I'm thinking about this concatenation that we're doing, where we maybe this concatenation will have to be different because we're specifically concatenating the equal to the pivot always in the middle point. Um, uh, always the pivot in the middle point, and I wonder if we. Um, uh, let's try it out. What if we go into the code and say the pivot will always be one? Oh, sorry, zero, right? Um, but then I think we here, no, yeah, I think this wouldn't work um, in the long term because we'll do, we'll need to put the pivot first. Uh, let's do equal to pivot uh, dot concat. <clears throat> Concatenate that with the left um, and then with the right. Let's see. Oh, this is interesting. There's another quick sort. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So for this implementation, we do need to, um, but it's, it's, mostly, it's mostly because of the fact we're concaten the way we're concatenating here uh, and because we're actually making copies of the array for each has, the other implementations don't make copies. Um, what they do is they just keep pointers to say, okay, this is the left side and this is the right side. Um, so in this case, if we pick the first one, it wouldn't really work uh, for us. Yeah, and I also thought about if you have a, the pivot is like the first element, you can't mm -hmm. have a left side or a right side, I guess. Right. Mm -hmm. That becomes complicated there. Yeah. Alejo, there is another way to concat without writing uh, uh, concat with the dot notation. Mm. Yes, thank you for pointing that out. 
Um, how could I do that here? Uh, how would I need to change it? You do the array and you do uh, three dots. Like that? Yeah, remove the the last bracket. Just okay. left sorted. And then you're going to do a comma, then three dots. Mm -hmm. And then you do equal pivot. You remove the concat notation. OK. And then again, comma, three dots, and all right sorted. And you mm -hmm. close the array. Yes, this is a nice way as well. Actually, this, I think this is cleaner. Like that? Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's try it out. Oops, I think I removed, oh, yeah. my, my condition, my base case went out of the window. Let me... <clears throat> Mm -hmm. well, let me try if I remove the three first one. What's going to happen? Okay. Oh, okay. So if I remove the three dots, it's going to put the two as an array. And then it's going to put four, eight. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, you know, when there is a tree, like it's array inside the array inside the array. If you, if you mm -hmm. forget how to put the the three first dots. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like nested. Nested, yeah, that's correct. Mm -hmm. You get this nesting because mm -hmm. okay. we need to we need to spread it, uh, spread the yeah, the spread, spread the array. Right. Cool. Thank you. Cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so this is this is the this is one easy implementation. Um, I think it's, it exposes the main concept of that half. Um, any other questions here or thoughts? No, uh, you make it really clear to understand how uh, the quick sort working and it goes like to the stack and how it hmm. gets connected to uh, like a uh, contact at the end. Thank you, easy. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, 